In this presentation, we are going to look at binary integer programming. So uh, what I'm going to do here is just to read out the first statement there is that uh, I'll just blow this up a bit. Uh, there's a couple of things really, there's only a couple of things I really need to talk about. Uh, so Merrill Lynch is considering investments in six projects, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. So that's the first thing we're going to consider. Now, uh, each project has an initial cost. Okay. And so on. Um, but what we're interested in here is I'm going to look at the logical constraints in particular in this question. Okay, so I there's a lot of stuff there about minimizing costs, maximizing profit, minimizing costs, minimizing hazard rates, and so on. Uh, that's fine. But what I'm going to do in this particular presentation is uh, suppose a if that if a is chosen, b must be chosen. Okay. Uh, this is an example of a logical constraint, and also suppose that if C, uh, if B, C and D are chosen, E must be chosen. Okay. So what I'm going to sort of concentrate is writing in these sort of uh, how to write in these sort of constraints. This is what I'm particularly interested in right now. So let's get started on this. So what I'm going to do first off is just quickly introduce uh, X. Uh, a, X B, X C, X D, X E, and X F. Okay, and these are all binary variables. That is to say, they're either all zero or one. So uh, if A X A is zero, um, did not. Uh, did not proceed on that means we did not proceed on uh, investment A something like that and if it's one so it did not invest in project A something like that so that's what it sort of means and if it is one did invest in project A okay so what I'm particularly interested in is these sort of uh, uh, logical constraints where we might... Uh, the for first one I'll pick out is let's suppose we can only ha pick four of these projects. Okay, uh, I'll talk about the other ones first, but let's just start, start off with this. Suppose uh, we can only uh, uh, have four projects, four uh, four of those projects there. So let's just actually sort of let, let, uh, so, sort of look at that one. How will we const uh, value that one? X A plus X B plus X C plus X D plus X E plus X F. If we only have four of them, okay. Let's just say, for argument's sake, four of those projects. Uh, let's just say, for argument's sake, we pick out A, C, and E to go ahead with. We would have a one here, a zero here, a one here, a zero here, a one here, and a zero here. The summation there would be three. Okay, so essentially that's how we're sort of looking at the problem. So let's suppose we have a scenario where we have at most. Four. So how we would sort of look at that, or how we sort of formulate that is essentially uh, x a plus x b plus x e less than or equal to, or let's do this in black pen, less than or equal to four. Okay. So that's how we uh, 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 might sort of formulate that. So let's what what am I saying there? At most four investments. Okay. Now let's look at another another constraint. Uh, only two from A, B, C. Let's say we had something like that. So we can disregard the rest of the variables. We can only have two from A, B, and C. Something very similar. X A plus X B plus X C less than or equal to two. Okay. Um. Next, another one we might f uh, have is that um, 
Yeah, that's actually as everything I can think of. So, so we're we'll getting into more unusual ones. That suppose that if A is chosen, B must be chosen. Modify your solution. So, in this first one here, if suppose that if A is chosen, then B must be chosen. What we're going to do is use a truth table approach. Okay. So, what I'm going to do here is when this is on jams, there we go. Is I'm going to set up a truth table. X A x b set up a little truth table here okay so zero if it went ahead or didn't go ahead one if it did go ahead so that's how we might sort of set up a truth table if you're unfamiliar with truth tables or binary tables like that i suggest you look it up okay so which outcomes, which combination of outcomes are okay? Well, if we don't have to build either, let's look at this again. It's suppose that if A is chosen, B must be chosen. Okay, so the only outcome there that we can't have is this one here. Building A, but not building B. Okay, that's not allowed. Okay, all of the other ones are allowed. You, you don't, if you don't have to build A, you don't have to build B. You could build B without building A, so that's okay. You can't build A and then not build B, and well, you can build both of them. Okay. So which outcomes here are okay? This one here, this one here. The, 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 essentially, the first row, second row, and fourth row. Okay. But what we need to do is write it in such a way that we can state it as a uh, linear programming constraint. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write. Uh, so we might actually sort of experiment like a bit like this. So x b minus x a. Okay, zero minus zero. Now this is just straightforward uh, num numerical arithmetic. It's zero minus zero. It's not binary or anything like that. So zero. Uh, one minus zero. Oh, sorry, zero minus. Uh, 1 minus 0, that will give us 1. 0 minus 1 will give us minus 1, and that will give us 0. Okay. And again, which outcomes here are not allowed? Just the minus 1. So essentially what we want to do is write a constraint such that xb minus xa is either 1 or, uh, is one or above. Okay. So how we might write that is xb minus xa greater that are uh, greater than or equal to zero okay that's how we simply might write that greater than or equal to zero so it counts for a zero or one we can actually write that in reverse xa minus xb is less than or equal to zero that's the equivalent it's just sort of rearranging things around okay so either of those two would work fine there so if you build a if you uh Suppose that if A is chosen, B must be chosen. So if you want to sort of uh, compute that as a binary integer constraint for a binary a binary integer problem, either of these two would work fine. Okay. So the next one is suppose that if C and D are chosen, E must be chosen. Okay. Now let's just sort of so if uh, let's C and D are both chosen, as in we have both C and D, okay? So let's take that uh, scenario that both have to be chosen, okay, together, uh, uh, then E must be chosen. But if it's the case that it's one or the other, we can just rearrange things accordingly, okay? So I'm just going to sort of uh, work on the basis that both of them together have to be chosen. But anyway, how do we do this? So again, the best approach here is truth tables. So I'm just going to pause and draw out the truth table here. So there it's drawn. Um, I have little. Uh, so essentially, we have eight rows there as well as the headers. Uh, zero one, zero one, zero one. So we start from the right hand side and work left. Zero one, zero one. Then zero zero one one, zero zero one one. Then here we have four zeros and four ones. Just in case you're not sure how to draw a tr truth table. Uh, here the 
case is suppose that if C and D are chosen, E must be chosen. Okay, so both of them together are chosen. So the only sort of combination of outcomes here that is not valid is this one. If we have built C and built uh, D, we must have built E. So not building E is not allowed. Okay, so this one is not allowed. Okay, um, yeah. So let's just look through it. We didn't build C, we didn't build D, we didn't build E. That one's okay. We built E on its own without needing B or C or C or D. That one's okay. It doesn't say anything about that. We built D on its own. We built D and built E, but we didn't build C. Okay. Uh, there's nothing in the rules against that. We built C on its own. We built C and D on its own. Now, we built C and D, but we didn't build E. This is the one is the one we're not allowing, uh, according to my first interpretation of the, of the problem. And then, the last one is we built all three. That one's okay as well. Okay. So, just to sort of say, if it's you have to build one or the other or both, okay, one or the other or both, that would disqualify this one up here, okay? Just in, take, in case you're taking the opposite interpretation, okay? That you had to build one or... Oh, you, oh, if you had to build... Uh, sorry, let's just look at the problem again. Sorry. If you build one, you have to build... If you, have to, if you build C, you have to build E. That one would not be allowed in this other case. Or this one, you, if you build D, then you have to build E. That one would be sort of not allowed. So it's actually not that one. I'm just, just looking at the wrong one. But anyway, that's uh, just in case you wanted to take a different interpretation. But it's just actually, which depending which way you interpret it, picking out the, the correct uh, set of lines there. So it's just, I, I'm taking one particular interpretation. It's very easy to switch to the other once you have the truth table set up. So what I'm going to do here is first off add up uh, C and D, X, C plus X, D, okay. So here we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, okay. By the way, that's not binary arithmetic, that's just normal conventional arithmetic. But I want to sort of, okay, so that's okay. Now what I want to do is a sort of an experiment in a way that I can incorporate the values for E. So what I might try and do is subtract uh, the values for E. So I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to move this across a bit. And XE, or minus XE, okay. So that would be 0 minus 0, 0 minus 1, minus 0, minus 1, minus 0, minus 1, minus 0, and minus 1. And in this case, what I'll do here is just beside it, write the corresponding values. Okay, so that would be 0, minus 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 1. Okay. Now, just recall the only outcome the only outcome here that is not allowed is this one here okay so essentially we cannot get we are not allowed to have a value of 2 when we calculate this okay that is the outco uh, the outcome of that uh, numeric calculation so essentially our constraint will be as follows uh, xc plus xd minus xe has to be less than or equal to 1 okay let's just go back there where did I come from that so the only it, it can be no more than 1 okay it can be no more than 1 uh, so uh, yeah so the only uh, it can be yeah now let's just say for argument's sake I want to have one more constraint you can only build e this is new one now only build E if, or only invest in E, sorry, if already invested in C or D, one or the other, okay? So this is a separate, we'll treat this separate.
problem, but we'll use the same truth table. Okay? So we can only be invest in E if one or the other have been invested in. Okay? So this is a separate problem. So the one outcome here that is not allowed is this one. Okay? We didn't build, uh, we didn't invest in C, we didn't invest in D, but we invested in E. Okay? Now, according to that very same calculation, the outcome would have been minus 1, okay? So, uh, for this uh, equation here, a f uh, 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 something we're not, uh, an outcome we're not allowed to have is minus 1, okay? The other one we could separate, the, this other one here, we could just treat it as a different, t entirely different constraint. We forget about that one for the time being. So, but we're going to do something similar. For a second constraint, we do something very similar, xc plus xd minus xc greater or, equal, greater or equal to zero, okay? So, anyway, that's enough of that.